Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Tuesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. Today is Tuesday, January the 8th. I am Mr. Met, and on today's show, I'm going to talk about two things. Um, one of them is something I touched on a little bit yesterday when I discussed the 40-man roster. Today, I want to look more closely at what the lineup construction ought to be for 2020. Uh, I'm going to at least throw out my opinion for what I think the starting lineup will be. And uh, I'm talking about position in the lineup, not position on the field. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the other um, sort of uh, free agent that's sort of hanging out there in the balance that's determining um, what the hell's going to go on in the National League. So I'm going to talk about that uh, on today's show. So let's do the uh, let's let's do the lineup first. We'll start there. Um, I've, I, I've, I'm a big fan of balance in the lineup, so I, I really like to see um, lefties and righties split up uh, across the lineup. So that's sort of how I've constructed one through eight in, in my lineup. And my lineup has an asterisk next to it that says Yoana Cespedes is going to be ready on opening day. So that's what this lineup is going to reflect. I didn't put anything together for what it would look like without Cespedes, but um, that's really just going to mean that J.D. Davis is swapping in for Yo. And I don't know if he would end up in the same position in the lineup, but um, I guess I can look at that another time or as we get closer to opening day and we figure out whether Cespedes will be there or not. So here's my lineup. Um, it's not, uh, it's nothing crazy, but here's what I'm, here's what I'm putting out on the field on opening day. Uh, lead off center fielder, Brandon Nimmo. That one is a no brainer. He's an on base machine. Um, I, 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 I'd like to see someone faster, um, leading off, but Nimmo gets on base more than anybody in the lineup. So I want him leading off. Now, I guess this is my controversial entry here, but I'm going to have Yoana Cespedes batting second in the lineup. Um, we've seen this a lot with teams tinkering with the, the power hitter in the, two, in the two hole. I don't always agree with that, but I'm going to put Cespedes second here, um, and I'm going to have McNeil, uh, and Cespedes will be in left field, by the way. I'm going to have Jeff McNeil batting third. McNeil will be the third baseman, but I have a McNeil bat third because he's – when he's in in the position he was in the first half last year where he slaps the ball all over the field and he has power to all fields, he's a dangerous hitter, he gets on base, and he sets the table for the cleanup hitter who will be the first baseman, Pete Alonzo. So, so far I've gone lefty-righty, lefty-righty, and I'm going to keep that up because after Alonzo I'm going to have uh, Michael Conforto um, lefty uh, in right field. So Conforto will bat fifth. I'm going to have Wilson Ramos batting sixth. He's going to do the catching <coughs> um, righty. I'm going to have um, Robinson Cano, the second baseman, batting seventh lefty. And I'm going to have Ahmed Rosario, switch hitter, batting eighth, the shortstop. Now, the, the one thing I don't love about Rosario in the eight hole is that it doesn't really utilize his uh, his speed. You know, he's, he's going to be a guy who gets um, – he's the fastest guy on the team, put it, put it that way. Um, he has not shown an ability to be a base dealer yet. Um, he could still grow into that. Uh, he's still young enough that he can learn how to do that. But um, I hate to see a guy with that speed and with that potential kind of crammed into the eight hole, but I just don't have any place else to put him. Um, and this is a deep lineup, you know, especially if Cano is right. Um, if a, if a even 75% Robinson Cano is your seven hole hitter, it's a pretty good, pretty good lineup. Um, there, there are some uh, options where you can flip some guys around. Again, if Cano has a, a has the kind of offensive season that you'd like to see him have, you could very easily swap him for McNeil and bat Cano third. That, of course, was Mickey Calloway's plan from day one, uh, which we all know how that worked out last year. But um, th there is some option to sort of poke around with guys and, and swap them around in the lineup. But I like this lineup. It's pretty balanced. Um, it it uh, avoids bunching up any lefties or righties. It makes it a challenge for opposing um, managers to manage around because of the three batter minimum that's going to be implemented in 2020 for um, for relievers. So you know you can't bring in the lefty specialist to face uh, the tough lefty. Um, like let's just say Jeff. Mc let's just say you want to bring in a lefty to face McNeil, right? And, and and you go with the lefty. Well, then if you get McNeil out, you, you got to face Alonzo, <laughs> you know, 
uh, or, or, or Cespedes even, you know, you could have um, a, a lefty come in to face Nimmo, but then he's got to face Cespedes. So this, this having the lineup as balanced as this for me is, uh, is the way to go. We'll see if this is close to what the Mets end up doing. And again, if, if Cespedes is not ready to start the season, uh, then we're inserting J.D. Davis into the lineup. We might want to tinker with a few things. Um, let me just sort of on the fly think about what that might be. Um, and it might actually involve moving um, um, Ahmed Rosario toward the top of the lineup. Uh, where, you know, you might have Rosario batting second. Uh, that's that's a possibility. I don't like JD Davis batting eighth, but you know there's there's some there's some tinkering that you can do there and sort of swap those guys around um, to to insert Davis if Cespedes isn't ready to go. So uh, so that's the lineup. I want to know what you think about my lineup. What you think you'd do differently? Um, if I'm crazy and missing something, uh, let me know in the comments below or uh, on Twitter. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on is, um, is is a story that I read this morning by um, John Harper on Mets Blog, and it was about Josh Donald Josh Donaldson, and this is a guy who I really grew to hate last year uh, because he had such a good season with the Braves. I thought he was going to be terrible. I thought they're signing him to a one-year, twenty-four million dollar contract was batshit crazy. And then he went on to have a phenomenal, phenomenal season to the point where now he is uh, a free agent. Uh, he is being pursued by multiple teams, all of whom are offering four-year deals uh, in the neighborhood of um, in the neighborhood of six figures, frankly. So uh, the big question is, where's Donaldson going to sign? Is he going to sign with uh, with the Nationals? Is he going to sign with a uh, re-sign with the Braves? Is he going to sign with the Twins? Uh, are the Dodgers in the mix? There are a number of different options for Donaldson. And personally, I'd love to see him get the hell out of the NL East just because of how he killed the Mets last year. And he killed the Mets. That's why I hated him so much. But um, th there, there are other teams in the mix, but it's looking really, really strongly like he's going to end up back with the Braves, which is a huge boon for Atlanta. Um, he was a huge piece of their offense last year. And if he doesn't go to the Nationals, I think the Nationals are really compromised with their lineup. Um, losing Rendon was huge. They've made a few minor, um, smaller additions. So they've re-signed Esdrubal Cabrera. They brought in Starlin Castro. They uh, signed Eric Timms yesterday. But I, it's not the same as, as Anthony Rendon. And Juan Soto is going to be exposed. Now, the kid has an unbelievable eye, and he's going to be very patient, and I suspect he'll draw a ton of walks. But his production won't be what it used to be because he doesn't have the protection in the lineup. So seeing where Donaldson winds up, um, to me, is going to make the difference between um, the Braves being the favorite to win the division or the Nationals being the favorites to win the division. So uh, we'll keep a close eye on that. And uh, when we have more news, we'll talk about it. So until then, uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always... Let's go Mets.